then let's start with the design of the glass so in especially in the uh, glass design the panels the unitized is i'm uh, let me clear here that i will be talking about only the uh, unitized system uh, designs so the same concept is applicable even for the stick system or uh, uh, the semi unitized system but the same concept cannot be applied for the point fixed glazing or any other uh, systems but here the say the uh, all the the following calculations which will be shown or will be shared is applicable for the uh, stick system semi unitized system or unitized systems so let's begin with the uh, the stability of the glass if the floor to floor is 4 meters height let's say it's 4 meter height floor to floor and the panel width is 1.8 meter and we have a transoms here and normally this will be a called as the mullion this will be the stack joint these will be the the transoms so if this single glass is about uh, 2 meters the stability of the glass can be used uh, using the code of practice that is ASTM 1300 or even by the software can be used or even the theoretical approach also can be uh, followed especially this glass is considered as one glass panel this is the whole unit is one unitized glazing panel but here this is the one single glass so this gl single glass will be of 1.8 by 2 meters if we check this using the stad pro so the same model can be used that is uh, 1.8 meters and and this is the height of the panel and since all the structural sealant will be applied this the all the sides of the glass panel will be supported so that is the reason this will be considered as all the four edges are supported and applying the wind load on this the whole glass panel we can always check the deflected shape of the glass under the wind load and if there is any live load acting then we can always apply the live load uh, as a point load and the check the deflection and the stresses also can be checked using the same software any finite element software gives with this results so using the chart that is the first method and this is the uh, second method if i'll be explaining how we can determine the glass thickness or the stability of the glass using the american standard that is astm 1300 using the charts given in the code assuming the glass size as 1.8 by 2.4 meters and thickness of the glass is 6, 12 and 6 and let us assume as a wind load of 1.5 kPa. So, this the aspect ratio is the bigger side of the glass size by the smaller size which will be equal to 1.33 and the load resisted by the uh, two plays that is uh, the 6 and 6 mm will be equal because of its equal thickness. So, uh, the deflection the and the non factored load chart for the 6 mm can be selected uh, and it will be something like this so this is the load into area square so where area is your glass area that is 2.4 and 1.8 that is 1.8 into 2.4 so this will give you the area and the load shared by each uh, glass uh, ply that is 1.5 kPa divided by 2 which will be equal to 0.75 kPa. So, the 0.75 into your 1.8 into 2.4 uh, whole square the value whatever you get will be 14. So, draw a vertical line on the 14 the, on this bar chart and then the same aspect ratio 1 
on the curve where the intersect point is there draw a horizontal line so the left hand side value whatever will be shown that is the 19 mm is the glass center deflection on the same chart for a uh, 6 mm thick glass that is your 2.4 meters width draw a vertical line and the width of the panel is 1.8 meters draw a horizontal line where the two intersect draw a cross line from the zero of the chart and then draw a perpendicular so the line wherever it intersects it's 1.25 so the resistance of the 6 mm glass uh, glass resistance will be the non factored load for 6 mm glass will be 1.25 kpa so depending on the type of glass being used that is uh, uh, whether the glass is annealed glass or heat strengthened glass or the tempered glass so the factors will be given in the astm code so those factors have to be applied for the non factored load this is just the non factored load that is the glass resisting capacity so for that when once the glass is processed so that the strength of the glass increases so those factors we have to consider let's say if it is um, heat strengthened glass it is 1.25 so uh, the load resisting uh, strength of the glass will be 1.25 into 1.25 that is this nfl we derived from the uh, previous this chart so hence this 1.25 and the factor is 1.25 because of the glass uh, processing that is the type of glass heat strengthened glass so this value has to be greater than the load which has to be resisted by the glass that is in this case this will be 0.75 kpa whatever the value will be derived so this value has to be more than the load generated so hence we can define if the glass satisfy all these that is uh, the deflection criteria the stress criteria or the load resisting criteria so we can assume we, or we can tell that the glass Uh, specified or the glass being used is safe for the uh, module and also for the wind load generated next let's go to the sealant bite requirement so the sealant bite thickness which can be calculated by using the following formula that is 0.5 times the short span into the wind load divided by sealant strength sealant design strength so the sealant design strength is this is uh, the standard that is 140 that is cn per mm square so using this formula we will get the bite size required for the panel um required for the panel which is uh, customized or uh, which varies uh, as per the uh, project to project so uh, let's go to the mullion design in this case in the unitized panels there are uh, two components that is the main mullion and the female mullion so these two uh, mullions are combined together to form as a single mullion but whereas in the stick system if you see the stick system will have a closed profile as shown here that is it's a single profile but whereas in the unitized system it will be two different profiles that is this is one profile and this is the second profile which will be coupled together to form a, a single rectangle uh, mullion with the first thing what we have to check is since these are the open sections we have to check the element one that is this wall and the element the two that is uh, the load being transferred on to this element and also the load 3 that is the element 3 that is here the glass will be held here so that is why we have to check these are the main checks and also along with that if the profile has the inner uh, arm also even this arm also the length and the thickness whether it is required or whether what is used is safe under buckling or uh, is it safe to transfer the load that is the first check what it has to be 
done. Uh, the same, the checks are applicable even for the female mullion and the both are then checked as a combined mullion. So, when it comes to the, the checking uh, or the structural stability of the mullion, so the, the first combined mullion will be checked for the deflection criteria and the bending moment stability and the shear force is it safe to carry the shear force. Individually both the male mullion, female mullion have to be checked whether individually whatever the load being transferred onto the mullion that is the male mullion and the female mullion based on their distribution factors based on their inertia. We have to check individually the male mullion and the female mullion whether they are safe to carry the loads and after that the combined mullion has to be checked for the combined load transfer also that is your moment and the shear force combined we have to check all the three factors. This is just a case study wherein um, it has been wherein the STAD pro or uh, finite element analysis was used to analyze the stability of the mullion wherein the panels was uh, 1.2 uh, meters actually the panels was 2.4 meters we have a dummy mullion here let us not get into that uh, but the panel is uh, let us assume the panel is 1.2 meters by 4.0 meters height. So, uh, this panel has a dead load bracket here and these are the transoms this is the stack joint and this is the transom these are the stack joints and this is the dead load and the wind load brackets for the panels. So, uh, the same the three panels have been modeled using the uh, STAD as per the actual and then the wind load has been applied perpendicular to the uh, facade or the uh, elements. Then the bending moment and the shear force has been uh, taken from the software that is uh, after the application of the wind load, the dead load of the glasses and if, the, if any live load is acting on the uh, facade as per the specification requirements, uh, the maximum bending moment developed has been uh, taken derived here and which is always directly given from the software and also the shear force developed is also given by the software. So, we have to check the moment that is the bending moment developed and the shear force developed for in the mullion that is the, the bending moment will be resisted by the mullions. So, the same we have to do the checking for all the deflection, the bending moment and the shear strength stability have to be checked and then after that if all the individually we have to check the male mullion stability and female mullion stability and combined mullion and then for the combined loads we have to check. So, once all these satisfies we can always tell that the mullion um, is safe against the uh, wind load or the loads being transferred. How we can uh, derive the um, uh, the deflections or uh, how we can say that uh, the, the, the profiles which are being used is structurally safe. So, the results have to be compared and as per, I, as per um, IS 8147, the deflection in the, uh, the structural glazing or uh, in the unitized panels is considered as span by 175 span by 175 where the span indicates as the unsupported length of the mullion. That is in this case we have the bracket at every floor height that is at 4050 meters. So, the span will be considered as 4050 by 175 whatever it gives the value in mm that is the maximum allowable deflection in the mullion. So, the deflection in the mullion has to be limited because it has to be within the value uh, specified as per the code. The deflection cannot exceed or should not exceed 
uh, even though if the deflection exceeds the span by 175, but it should not be uh, uh, too high because it directly depend the on the it will have an effect on the glass also. Next, let us see the design of the the main supporting uh, uh, structure or the brackets design which will hold the panels. The stability of the bracket uh, uh, connecting to the mullion is has to be checked for the dead load and the wind load. So, uh, when when the panel is the, uh, the, the unitized panel will always be hanged from the top that is this will be the dead load brackets. If you have any brackets here that will be completely the wind load wind load brackets which will only resist the wind load but mainly especially the dead loads will be carried only at the top that is at the slab level the slab or beam whatever the, the main supporting structure level the dead load brackets will be provided. So, this bracket has to be uh, checked for both the uh, reactions that is the dead load and the wind load and this will be the completely dead load of one panel which depends on the type of glass, the thickness of the glass and the profiles uh, used. We have to always calculate the dead load of the complete one panel and then the wind load. So, the supporting structure can be any the steel or uh, slab or a beam, it can be anything. So, based on that brackets will be provided, the brackets will be anchored onto the slab or the beam and in turn the bracket will be connected at side to the mullion through bolting. So, these bolts have to be checked for the, uh, the resultant force developed by the dead load and the wind load and the bolt grade have to be specified and also the eccentricity develops a moment onto the anchor. So, the moment has to be considered and has to be derived and the what is the required anchor to resist the uh, dead load, wind load and also the moment caused by the dead load and also the wind load due to the eccentricity which has to be checked. So, normally the anchors in general practice the Hilti, uh, there are many brands which uh, can be used such as uh, commonly used uh, will be Hilti. Uh, or uh, Fisher or Mongo, uh, there are many, many types of anchors. So, uh, we, we can use on all these anchors softwares, they uh, provide uh, the softwares to uh, calculate the stability of the anchors and we can always use those. So, based on the edge distance criteria and all those things, if we input then uh, and the reactions, so, the, uh, the uh, feasible anchor which has to be used for that uh, project for those panel uh, depending on the, the wind load specified. So, the anchors can be calculated. Okay, let us go uh, to the spider glazing or the, uh, the point fixed glazing. So, the glass is uh, in this system, the glass is supported by the uh, spider arms where the spider arms are designed. Uh, to transfer the loads. So, these spider arms especially um, uh, will be supplied from the, spy, uh, the suppliers or we have to design what is the kind of uh, spiders is required based on the glass panels, the wind load, the span and the, uh, the, all these are the designing factors for the spider arms. So, these spider arms are in turn supported in the glass fin. So, the glass fin can be of uh, half length glass fin that is as a, it behaves as a cantilever beam or it can also be as a full height depending on the design intent or the opening uh, in the building where the spider glazing is proposed. So, the glass fin will be generally supported onto the main structure and the glass fin will be hanged from top. It will not be support, it will be supported at the bottom, but it has to have the moment in the, at the bottom. So, uh, this shows the full height of the glass fin. Uh, this is the, the glass fin 
full height of the glass fin and this glass fin since the glass fin comes only uh, for a span of uh, 6 meters. So, this glass fin is uh, uh, connected with a splice connection. So, uh, this in this glass fin is approximately uh, 12, uh, around 20 meters. So, which has a two splice connection and this is the glass, uh, bottom glass. The bottom glass will be normally supported by the U channel. So, the bottom glass will be will be supported by the U channel that is this is the glass it will be supported by the U channel which will have the moment and the glass the spider arm will be fixed here the next panel will have will have the same arm so one spider will have will be holding the four glasses so, that means each one spider will have to carry the dead load and also the wind load being transferred from one single full panel. So, this is one more example wherein the glass fin is half length. So, this is the half cantilever glass fin where it spans only until here. The glass fin is supported at the top and this glass panel is supported through the spider arm and it is supported at the bottom the U channel. So, the stability of the uh, the glass can be used as uh, said in the previous methods that is uh, using any um, uh, finite element softwares. So, in the finite element software the glass panel can be modeled like this and it with the hole and these points have to be supported and do the plate analysis. So, which gives the uh, results of the deflection and also the stresses developed in the glass under the wind load and also the dead load. So, the allowable deflection, these reactions which are developed have to be uh, transferred on to the glass fin again. Uh, and then the glass fin has to be checked for the deflection and also the uh, the stresses developed in the glass fin. So, the very important or the critical check for the glass fin will be the buckling check. So, the, since this is a plate element and it is very fragile and also the glass fin is uh, very uh, you know the thickness is less and also the depth of the glass fin will be the load being transferred onto the glass fin will be uh, quite critical. So, it tends to buckle. So, that is why the buckling check for the glass fin is very very important. So, the, the buckling check formula has to be followed as per the American as per the Australian standard. It is uh, AS 1288 uh, glass in the building. If what will be the deflection of the uh, glass fin when the horizontal uh, that is the when the buckling length is reduced that is by providing a horizontal glass fin or if there is no horizontal connection at all between the two adjacent uh, uh, glass fins then what what is the uh, buckling strength or the moment carrying capacity of the glass fin this can be derived based on the uh, the formula given in the uh, australian standard 1 to 8 it here you all might think that why suddenly we are switching from Amer uh, indian standard to uh, australian standard so uh, since the indian standard is uh, uh, the indian code of practice is in, is dated back in 1976 and uh, still the upgradation of the code is going on and uh, uh, the indian code uh, for glasses uh, first of all is not very clear and it has to and uh, there is no specification has been specified especially for the glass fins uh, check. So, hence uh, this has to be followed as per the uh, Australian standard AS 1288 which is worldwide um, uh, which is a common worldwide uh, practice and um, thank you all uh, uh, for this uh, presentation.
and you can always contact me through uh, the glass academy if for any further questions thanks